We have been discussing how to better deal with stress in this series, but do we even know what stress is? So in this video, we will be looking into an interesting topic. We will briefly discuss the biological reality of stress. And to better deal and cope with stress, it is a fundamental that we know what it is in the first place. So first, we will look into what the flight or fight response is. Then we will look into the two primary functions of our cells, growth and protect. And with the understanding of these two points, we will be able to comprehend the biological reality of stress to a significant degree. Keep in your mind that everything psychological is biological. This means that when you have a certain feeling or are involved in a certain psychological state, like stress for example, then your biology is simultaneously affected in some way by your psychological state. So when you feel relaxed or stressed or feel hurt in your heart, etc., it's not something abstract or metaphysical or something like that, but your literal biology and biochemistry is changing with respect to your psychology. Hence, when you feel psychologically stressed, your biology is affected by it. And in this video, we will be discussing briefly how that is. And knowing this in my personal knowledge is extremely valuable. So be sure to pay close attention to what I wanted to say here. So let's begin. First, let's discuss about what the flight or fight mode is. Our body in some situations where it psychologically feels that its survival is in danger. Then at this specific moment, our body occupies a state called the flight or fight response. Let's say you are happily walking about in a street like the little old red riding hood, unaware of the dangers ahead. Then you suddenly encounter a pack of dogs, let's say three dogs. And not just any dogs, but wild and viciously ferocious dogs who collectively agree that your meat smells delicious. So your happy moment deletes from the DVD of life and you gaze upon the upcoming danger. Three doggies begin barking at you in a threatening way and start running towards you with the intent that they just want to plant their gigantically little sharp teeth into your seemingly delicious flesh. So unless you are a professional dog whisperer, what normally happens is that your body immediately reacts to the situation and you start running really really fast to escape the danger. In these type of situations, your fight or fight response kicks in. In this state, most of your blood that is maintaining your body and keeping it growing smoothly in a healthy rhythm, most of it gets pulled away from your vital organs and gets concentrated in your hands and feet and your limbs. And because of that, if you fight or run in a flight or fight response, then you can fight or run in a way you wouldn't thought would be possible. Your punches will blow more damage and your feet will have so much energy and stamina that you could run like a professional athlete. Basically, the concentrated blood in your limbs allow them to work more efficiently. And note that the blood in your body is like your worker army. Wherever it is, more work is being done there. If it's more concentrated in the head, you can do mental work really fast and efficiently. And if it's concentrated in your hands, you can punch more powerfully. If it's in your feet, you can run faster and so on. Another really interesting point about the flight or fight response is that in this state, most of the blood in the frontal low part of the brain gets shifted towards the part of the brain that deals with reflexes or immediate reactions to actions. The frontal lobe is the part of your brain that slowly but critically analyzes the situation and thinks of a plan to deal with it. But let's say in the case of vicious wild doggies wanting to bite us, we stood there for more than a few seconds thinking of what to do, then while we are thinking stuff, all, it's going to take some time, which we don't have. Until then, the doggies would have probably succeeded in, succeeded in attacking us and we could be dead. So to prevent this, the flight or fight mode shifts the blood from the analytical part of the brain, the frontal lobe I mean, to the part of the brain where we deal with reflexes, so that we immediately respond to the situation by escaping. The really interesting thing here is just that in the flight or fight mode, our brain basically loses the ability to think critically. I hope this makes sense and I also hope that now you have a better understanding of what the flight or fight response is. So let's move on. The cells in our body at a given moment have two functions. First is the growth, second is called protection. In a nutshell, at a given moment our cells are either focusing on our growth, that is fighting diseases, creating more healthy cells, etc. Or they are focusing on protecting our body from external dangers like by fighting in self-defense or running from wild doggies. Now what I'm about to say is really important. When we are in a state of relaxation, when we are completely relaxed, our cells or our body is in the state of growth. 
In the growth stage, the blood in our body is concentrated in our vital organs like the heart, kidneys, etc. In this state, our organs are working efficiently and hence our body is being properly maintained. Our frontal lobe is completely active so we can think calmly, positively, creatively and critically about anything and everything. Our immune system boosts and continuously being involved in this state would keep our body really healthy. But when we enter the state of stress, any stress at all, a degree of cells in our body go into protect mode. In the protect mode, some of the blood that is in our organs gets pulled away from our vital organs and then gets mostly concentrated in our limbs and then we enter the flight or fight response. So let's clear this up a bit. When we are stressed, we go into the flight or fight mode. The more stressed we are, the more into the flight or fight mode we go. So for now, we come to the conclusion that when we are in danger, protect mode is very helpful. And we go into the flight or fight state when we are stressed. But when we are in this state, our body stops growing. That means that if we stay in the protect mode for a long period of time, then our body will start to get sicker and sicker. I hope that makes sense. So let me rephrase it again, when we are stressed, we enter the fight or fight mode. But when we enter the state, our body stops growing because most of the blood gets shifted from our vital organs to our limbs. In this state, we can't think properly. In this state, we are reactive. We, we immediately, without thinking, react to what goes around us. We can't think critically and our body gets sicker and sicker. Being in this state for a long would literally hinder the growth of our body, slowly killing ourselves, damaging our beauty and damaging our capabilities and damaging our overall health. The purpose of telling you all of this is to make you cautious that whenever you are normally stressed in everyday situation, make sure to work towards relaxing yourself because staying in the state of stress for a long period of time will harm you and make you sick and will shut down your intellectual capabilities and our intellect is something that makes us human. In other videos in this series, I have presented many psychological tools you can use in different scenarios to relax yourself, so make sure to give them a look at. The link will be presented in the description and in the end of the video. So let's conclude what we learned in this video. We learned what flight or fight mode is, which is a natural response that we have when we are stressed. We learned that our cells are either working towards growth or towards protect. In growth, our body boosts our health and healing. In protect, we enter the fight or fight mode to deal with danger. And with this, we learn briefly the biological reality of stress. And we learned that in some situation like the dog is chasing us, it's good to have stress with us. It helps us to protect ourselves. But in normal everyday situations, bad management of stress is the reason for our miserable life. So we have to educate ourselves and learn to better handle stress so that we can live a more healthier and relaxing lifestyle. With this, we come to the end of our video. If you have any question, comment, or feedback, do let us know about it. Be sure to watch our other uploads and if you like this video and would like more of such videos, then be sure to give this video a thumbs up and support us by subscribing to our channel. Well, thank you very very much for watching and see you later awesome folks.